enjoyed the um, fact that you had a really strong beginning, middle, and end, and that there was this narrative structure involved. That was very satisfying. And the, the comedy, like the final like, ending comedic it was back. comment was really <laughs> lovely. Um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the sound design. It was really interesting. And it seemed as if it was also driven by the movement. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could speak about that. Uh, there's um, three sound samples being played that are being panned and the playback rate is being um, modified by the movement of his head and the, his wrist but they're done in a way that so that it's compelling so it's not that clear so and it also try to go backwards sometimes and we try to make it in a way that you don't you don't get it at the first time you just say ah that's what I'm that's gonna happen when he does this so it's more like happy accents it was a really satisfying use of interactivity because it wasn't just about mirroring or showing the body. So there was this like abstraction that was so satisfying and hearkening or referencing puppetry and all of these different ideas were flooding into my head. So it was really satisfying in that way not to just see a representation of your body but to see this other interactivity happening. And that's one of the things that I think we kind of like wanted to bring to the discussion was like who's leading and who's driving what because sometimes yeah. it's like we, we kind of like battle like is all of the technology driving the dance or is what's the role of the dance in terms of all of this technology so I thought it was kind of that's kind of what we wanted to bring to mm -hmm. this presentation. That was very clear. And it, and it really felt like you could do what you wanted to do, and you weren't you weren't tied to having to watch anything. So that was very successful. Did the technology ever lead you, or was it always you leading the technology? I will definitely say that uh, we had ideas about what we wanted to put into the code, and then kind of how we collaborated with that. And then for me, it's like, okay. I even mean, you were talking about this, getting a sense of the, the totality of what's happening. What does that look like? What does that sound like? Uh, what is happening in the sketch that can lead me to choreography that fits into what the sketch is doing, the code is doing, and then also like how is it a complete package? So once we were able to kind of say all of these parts are working, maybe a certain choreographic idea isn't working, or maybe a certain choreography isn't working. And so how can I how can I work with this? information to make it work and keep it interesting so that it's not like not like you're presenting all these ideas that have nothing to do with what the sketch was, was happening in the, in the sketch. I, yeah, I just follow up on the use of the word narrative. I did find that there was a kind of um, uh, bringing together of the audible environment, the visual environment, and the aesthetic environment you know, in a way that was Times kind kind of literal, um, especially in the, 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 the you know playing on the idea of a puppet. Um, um, so that was something, um, and I felt like the yeah the bending of the sound is kind of interesting to hear how uh, to what degree you would, if you know the creative process, to what degree you guys make a choice about how literal, how how concrete of a connection to make between the gesture and when the sound happens and. And I, for one, think it's nice that you went ahead and like, tried to maybe break it up a little bit, just because it creates a little more, um, little more uh, questions and a complex way of viewing it instead of just sort of straightforward um, alliteration. And um, um, I don't know, another nice, um, there were nice ways also of working in one literal way, like the sort of disorganized body moving in the beginning with the disorganized field of vision with the, you know, the dots and all that. So sort of a, uh, a very quick, right, uh, way into your body and imagining oh, internally what, what might that feel like. You know, there's a visual representation of what that might feel like. So I thought that was kind of a nice, clear way of working kind of representationally, even though it was kind of abstract imagery. Um, and, um, and a very nice uh, thing throughout, which was really strong, I thought, um, choreographically, was having a grounded dancer versus a suspended uh, visual. I thought that was really nice, the choice of having 
And I, know, I, I guess an organizing principle was this puppet thing. I don't know, maybe that came later. I don't know, was that like an original first thought and then everything flowed out and that sort of revealed itself as you started working? Um, the idea of strings and working. We, we set like super uh, big constraints on trying to use just uh, abstract figures. So we set up like so many circles or spheres, so many lines, right. and what we come up with that. And also bring up the question that interactive with the environment surrounding you, like playing around with that, see what Stone said, like who is leading the interaction. Right. Is it the dancer or is it the environment that he is but Did you though play with ideas about where, what part of the edge you were going to work with? As see, one thing as a dancer, um, you're you're dealing with gravity all the time. Um, you know, you like Kandinsky or certain artists, they kind of, how they dealt with dealing with gravity, you know, it's an interesting thing. So you were working with the visual field, how do you deal with gravity? And because you chose that top frame, it's a very specific kind of relationship. So was that something you discussed or tried different things with? Or it would have looked very different, in other words, if the point was bouncing from the bottom of the frame, right? As opposed to hanging. Yeah, so I don't know, that the, I think that's something that was just presented in the sketch, and we were just like, okay, we're gonna go with that. And at maybe initially, we were interested in like the natural thing, so that the things happen digitally also have a response to the movement that happens in the reality. Right. That's why. That's probably why the reality thing. Yeah, we tried to make a scene that way. Yeah. Try to make a scene what? Like, like natural, natural, real. Like there's an actual ball of mouse. Well, it's nice. You, you create. It creates a specific, um, some specific physical concepts that you're working with, you know, with gravity. So the suspension, um, you know, and the bouncing capabilities and all that. And it's, uh, then it creates a very specific range of motion or relationship between what you choose. You know, all the modalities you can go through, like this, heavy, you know, so weight, weight is a nice, and it really came across from your first.